Hi hey, YouTube and Reddit, Senator32 here again with another coin video. Uh, and this one, I wanted to start a series of videos that might be a little easier for me to produce and, and, I, and cover a topic that everyone asks me about, uh, which is a, a good topic, which is coin grading. Now, in my experience, one of the best ways to grade coins is to expose yourself to as many different coins as possible, uh, as frequently as possible, and um, from doing that, you kind of learn how to grade those coins. Now, there are so many coins, I have no uh, idea about how to grade, but I figured one way we could do this together, uh, and you can get you join the discussion over on reddit.com slash our coins, is that we could go through some of the newly posted CoinFAX images. These are high resolution images posted by PCGS on their CoinFAX website, and they're posted so frequently and in such numbers of all the different coins posted, I figured we could go through them and it'd be kind of fun. So we'll go through a page at a time and we'll try to grade these. Um, I'll tell you what, I will grade them uh, and tell you what I think as we go along. And you can see how bad I am grading these things and I'm going to get many of them wrong. So that's going to be a learning process for me too. Uh, you know, there'll be certain series I'll do better on, certain series I'll do worse. Um, but, you know, let's let's move along. So let's, without further ado, uh, let's move right along. So the first coin that we have here is a, uh, a wheat penny, a uh, wheat cent from 1946, minted in San Francisco. Uh, I I mean, it seems to me kind of like a weird choice to get uh, all image and everything. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. Uh, what do we know? We have a little bit of luster on the front. Uh, pretty good as far as the devices go. Uh, but the back, man, the back's really hit up. If it were me, this is definitely in the, like, XF or AU range, uh, but if it's in AU, it's in the low, low portion of it. You know, honestly, with the back like that, I'm grading this coin. I'm grading it somewhere around XF45. I mean, it has most of the devices there. You can see most of the things, but um, the back is just really beat up, and it's definitely seen some circulation. So uh, I'm going to now, on the other monitor, reveal what it is, and I'll let you guys know um, it was graded 50. So apparently, uh, this was uh, 50. Let me remove the bottom bar here for a second. Let's see, it was uh, 50 brown. So um, fascinating. Okay, so I, I guess I could see that. Again, it's a little more lenient than I would be, but uh, at least we're not too far off. So I'm putting the bar back up, and we're going to move right along to the next coin. Oh, man, uh, more Lincoln cents. Definitely not my area of expertise, though. Let's immediately, this one strikes me as much better. Obviously, this is a uh, an unk, uh, uncirculated, mint state example. Uh, you know, fully lustrous. A lot of red left. Uh, not, not enough to be like a fully red, but maybe a red-brown. Uh, and to me, this would not be in the gem category yet. Um, it's got too many spots. Uh, you know, the surfaces are actually pretty nice. On, on the obverse and the reverse, and in that case, I think it'd be gem. But I, generally speaking, you don't see these with the kind of spottiness, like the big spots you see, like in the obverse field in front of Lincoln's nose, and the spots around the one cent and the in uh, ends both cent and one. Uh, I'm gonna say Emma 64, uh, red brown. If there's a designation, if not, then just uh, Emma 64. So, all right, let's see. Oh, I actually nailed that one. Uh, MS64. So here we go. That's uh, not too bad. Makes sense for the reasons uh, we talked about. So let's put this the bar back up so we can't see the grade. And next, okay, look at this, a Lafayette dollar. Um, it was so-called dollar, right? Uh, interesting kind of original toning. Uh, I like the toning on the obverse a lot more than the toning on the reverse, though. Um, I guess I'm not, I'm not too familiar with this particular dollar. This is not one that I've sought out or particularly like myself uh, as far as design-wise, but uh, the back looks a little weakly struck, and uh, from what I know, uh, commemoratives usually are very, very well struck. Um, and then front, if you look on Washington's cheek, there's a massive scratch uh, kind of uh, in the cheek area, which uh, would be a problem uh, for me, giving it in the gym grade. So, I mean, to me, it looks like it's lustrous. looks like the rest of it's there. Maybe MS64 uh, would be my grade. All right. Get your grades in. Here we go. Let's see what it is. MS65 plus. Wow. You know, um, 
Hey, so not an expert in the series. Uh, this is definitely higher grade than I would have expected. But um, again, that's why we're doing this. We're doing this to learn. So, all right, bottom bar goes back up. Next. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, another another one I'm not too familiar with. You got the half dollar from 1935. Another Kamem, old Spanish trail. Uh, wow. I mean, if you look, the surfaces are pristine. Um, there's not a lot of marks. In fact, I thought it was a, a modern quarter when we first looked at it because one of the uh, the designs is very similar. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, just a little bit of splotchy toning under like old uh, and it looks like maybe a little bit of hit above the cactus or something like that. But I mean, I would have to say like MS uh, high IMS, definitely gem, uh, maybe 67. I'm not familiar with this completely, but it looks perfect. Um, yeah, yeah, I have no reason to think it's not a superb gem. A little bit below, uh, to the right of the uh, 30, 1935 or something. Let's see. Let's go ahead and reveal. 67 plus. So they liked it even more than I did. Um, huh. Well, interesting coin. I don't know what to say. It's nice, definitely nice. Um, okay, moving right along. Oh, I love these uh, from the Philippines, the one pesos. Well, this one's definitely uh, mint state. Uh, we can tell that pretty pretty quickly from the luster and the fact that it doesn't look like it'd be anywhere, though the back is a little weakly struck around the shield lines. Um, I mean, the other thing you immediately notice is this this is an unk coin, but it's been beat up pretty heavily. Um, definitely n uh, under gem. Definitely under... Ugh. I mean... Honestly, with the amount of luster it has, I might bump it up to choice, even with the back being as scratchy as it is. It, it has 63, uh, would be my guess, like, and mainly because it looks like it's super lustrous. Um, all right, well, let's see. Uh, bottom bar. Uh, here we go. It has 62. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I, it, you know, some of these things are going to be harder to grade. Uh, on the computer they are going to be in hand. Um, this one looks incredibly lustrous. So it's giving me some points there, but it, does, it must just have too many scratches. And, you know, kind of looking on the back, uh, in the reverse, to the left of the shield, there are a lot of scratches there above the eagle. So MS-62 probably makes a lot of sense. All right, let's seal it back up and go right along. Oh, here we go. Some pretty stuff right here. Uh, 1908 Denver uh, Barber Half. Whew. Uh, really nice. Uh, high mint state. It's not, uh, good, good toning. Um, no real marks in the field, man. This is awesome. I mean, there's a little bit of something or other on, uh, the high cheek there. Uh, it could be mint defect or, I don't know, but there's definitely something there that kind of knocks it down. But I think still, it still would be Jim. Um, Wow, the back is really nice. But that spot on the, the cheek really would limit it to me. Wow. I'm going to have to say, like, MS 65 like plus. Really nice because uh, of the color. Uh, yeah, sure. It's just a gem plus for me. 65 plus. Let's see what they actually grade it. 67. Okay. I guess whatever's on the cheek there is not uh, as bad or as mint made or uh, either way. Uh, okay, pretty coin. The toning, I think, carries the day there. Um, wow, okay, 67, wow. Must be really lustrous in hand, too. All right, let's move on. Okay, here we go. We got uh, Bust Half, 1814. Uh, it got some really sweet-looking die clashes or die breaks in the front. Oh, it's definitely die clash because you can see up in the top stars on the left side, you can see... Um, some of the olive branch from the reverse. That's amazing. Incredible clashing. Uh, whew, beautiful toning, too. Uh, very original. I don't think this coin's ever, I mean, this coin's never been messed with. Uh, the clashing's interesting on a half dollar. I mean, usually you see that very heavily on smaller denominations, but uh, as far as half dollars, you don't see it as much. Um, definitely mint state. I mean, very nice. I'm betting this is a really nice coin in hand. It looks darker, and if, you, if you're not used to looking at a lot of older coins, early 1800s and before, 
some of the old silver. I mean, it just has a darker tone to it, even when it's when it's uncirculated. I mean, to me, this is a uh, this is a choice coin, uh, MS sixty three maybe. Yeah, uh, something something along that lines. Um, beautiful. Uh, let's see what they graded it. Wow, sixty six. Wow, whole three points higher than even I guessed. Um, I mean, it just must be beautiful. It's kind of hard to tell with the. The die obviously being in a weird state and all the clashing, uh, but um, hmm. All right, well, I guess we'll keep on moving. Next coin. No, oh, no. Some of my nemesis, the uh, Franklins. Um, well, let's look. First thing I can tell you, pretty beat up Franklin. Uh, the back, uh, there's not really full bell lines uh, at the bottom. Um, one here, let me do something. Let me enable my cursor. There we go. So, like in, right in here, uh, we would want to see uh, full lines, and we're, we're not seeing them. It's obviously got a lot of hit there. Big hits up here in the obverse field. Hits all over the top. Ugh. I mean, if I'm grading, if I'm grading this, it's a 62, probably. Uh, especially with the back getting hit like this. Yeah. Uh, let's let's take a look. And see, uh, oh, sorry about that. Let's take a look and see bottom uh, bar here. 64. I think that is a very generous score. Uh, slash grade. I guess it would just have to be really nice as far as the luster. But eh, just goes to show you, I, I mean, I've seen many nicer 64s. I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, well. Moving right on. Okay. More Franklin. Now, this is a nicer Franklin. Um, right off the bat, I mean, when you, you compare to, let's go back one and look. So keep an eye here and like on the back. I mean, yeah, this one's bright, but this is a lot cleaner. This is a lot cleaner. Uh, and actually this one looks like you might have full bell lines going all the way across. No problems there. So, I mean, I'd give this gym full bell lines. It looks like there's a little bit of striations, a couple hits here on the, the, uh, the head. But yeah, 65 full bell lines probably, something like that. Hits on the back, but nothing too bad. Let's see. Let's go a little faster because this is getting a little bit repetitive. Oh, yep. Yeah, we got we nailed that one. 55 full bell line. Okay. Come on, some other than Franklin. Another Franklin. This one immediately looks worse. Let's see if we compare what we saw before. Very clean fields. Um, this one still. I no. I I wouldn't even give that full bell line. It looks almost, but then a little weak on this side of it. Um, Hits in the, so maybe 64 not full bell lines. Uh, 54D. Let's see. 64 full bell lines. Oh. Well, I think they saw more in the bell lines than uh, I did, but at least we're right on the grade. Huh. Okay. Moving right along. Oh, more Franklins. Uh, sometimes this happens in uh, the stream that I'm picking up of images from CoinFAX. Um. If we look at the top, there's some hits up here. Uh, immediately notice pretty clean fields. Um, hits on the cheek a little bit, nothing too drastic. Again, I don't think this is full bell lined. Um, and again, more hits here. You know, honestly, given the fact that I'm seeing a lot of these hits, I don't think it quite make gym for me. I do 64, um, not full bell lined. Yeah, I mean, it's real shiny. It might look better in hand, but let's see. 65. So we're okay. We're, they agree with us on the no full bell lines. They agree with me, but um, disagree on uh, the grade. I don't know. Maybe these hits aren't as bad in, in hand. Uh, again, pictures only tell so much. Man, more Franklins. Okay. Um, well, this one looks better. Uh, less hits overall. Very clean field. I still don't think that constitutes full bell lines, but cleaner here. Actually, all over, it's a lot cleaner. Uh, I'd say 60... Well, with the hits there, 65 not full bell lines. 65 full bell lines. So, again, we're getting close. But, I mean, that full bell line designation I would get me every time because that does not look it to me. Get Navy in hand. Ah, more Franklins. It's going to be a round full of Franklins. Um... This looks very nice. Very minor scuffs and hits. Completely clean fields. 
that looks a little more defined as far as the bell lines. Uh, hits up here, though. And, yeah, I was going to say 66 full bell lines, but I think with the hits on the back, I'm going to do 65. Yep, 65 full bell lines. All right. Now let's seal it back up and go on to the next. Ah, here we go. Morgan Dollars. It's a little more of my bread and butter. So what we're looking here is a 94.0, uh, all the mid you know, to early uh, 1890s, and the Morgans are uh, get a lot harder, um, especially, you know, the 92, 93, 94, 95 uh, years. This has certainly got most of the details here. Uh, it's an, uh, immediately, I'm thinking, XF coin. It's not an AU. We don't have enough de uh, detail and enough luster, but there's still a little bit of what looks like luster underneath. I mean, this looks like a textbook XF40, XF... 45 coin is going to totally depend on the amount of luster. I, the amount I can kind of see in the hair and stuff from this photo, I'm going to say it, and, and it's kind of around the E and everything here. I think it has some luster left. So I'm going to go with 45. Let's see, XF45. Do you guys agree? All right, well, let's uh, undo the bottom here. Yep, XF45. Awesome. All right, my Morgan skills aren't too rusty. Let's see what's next. Maybe we get lucky in some other Morgan. It is. Uh, again, from the 1890s. Uh, 92 plain. Not an impossible coin, but a very good one. Um, this one, I think, bumps you up into the AU category, but this horrible line of stuff there bugs me. Uh, not necessarily be a coin I'd buy. This stuff up here, you can see a lot of hits here. Uh, and, and a lot of wear. So you see the wear here. You see the wear over here, uh, kind of like how about the S, what it looks like, maybe a little down here uh, on the hair. So it's definitely a uh, AU coin. To me, I would go low end AU. I, I'm not, especially with this in the back. But it's not quite a 50. I'd say 53. Uh, and again, if it didn't have all this smudging and stuff, maybe a little higher. But yeah, 50 or 53. I guess I got to stick with one. I'll, I'll go with. Uh, 51.5, no. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go with 53. Uh, it looks bright. Uh, black bottom, 55, is what the PC Jess says. I mean, it's an understandable grade. We're, we're close. Uh, there's not a lot of difference between 53 and 55. To me, though, if I bought a 55, like this this is a little would, would annoy me a little bit. Uh, it's always what you want to buy, the coin, uh, not the holder. All right, well, moving right along. Oh, well, this one's fun. Looks like it's a 1921 S? No, D? 1921 D? Hard to tell. Uh, wow. Um, I personally uh, would body bag it immediately um, because of those hits. I am horrible. I hate rim bumps. Uh, and... Uh, to me, that's egregious enough. I would probably say rim damage. Um, other than that, this is a low ball coin. This is really kind of nice. It's like a poor two or fair two. It, it's a yeah. I better. It's worse than good. I'd say two if it's got a grade. Uh, damaged otherwise. Let's see. Where's my bottom one? Okay. Uh, I guess they kind of net graded it down with that bump. Man, this would be actually a sweet coin if it wasn't for that uh, there at the top. Um, hmm, it would kind of run it for me. Oh, well. Moving right along. Oh, this is really nice. Here we go. 1943S uh, Lincoln Scent. Uh, high gem. Immediately, you can kind of tell it's a gem. It's got beautiful color. Uh, original. As you can tell, it's starting to tone a little bit. Maybe a little more than I like in a gem, but no, it's 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 gem. There's no marks really. I think it keeps out of the superb gem category though, or anything really higher than gem because of kind of the splotchy toning on the front, especially right on Lincoln. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna stick straight with 65. It doesn't quite get a 66. It's a really common coin. Uh, man, you could probably pick up 65 for only a couple uh, 50, 60 dollars. I mean, it's very inexpensive. Still neat coin to see in this grade. Obviously, a lot of them have rusted and are nasty. Um, yeah, 65. That was a pretty easy one. I think that makes that makes a lot of sense on that coin.
Okay. Moving right along. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so we got a 1932 Philadelphia Mint Washington Quarter. Whew. Uh, looks uncirculated from the look of it. Um, some weird toning. Not overly attractive. A little splotchy. Uh, big old scratch there in the front. A couple of nicks on Washington here. You know, I, I was tempted to say a little bit higher, but I think because this, if, if I was grading this, this splotchy kind of unattractive toning in the back and that scratch in the front would uh, would take it out of gym. Um, I don't, I, I'm going to say 63, yeah, just because of the scratch in the front and then uh, that bad toning. Yeah, 64. So it's either, uh, they like it a little more than I do. We're going to say, sometimes you get a little subjective. This is definitely not my series. They know better than I do. Moving right along. Ah, here we go. Oh, this is a nice looking coin. Almost a proof like quality to it. Um, you can tell because it looks like a little darker reflective mirrors here. Um, spots, kind of nasty looking spots above the motto there. Um, a lot of mint frost though. Big scratches here and here. Keeps it out of gem state immediately. Uh, you know that's not a gem coin. A couple kind of annoying spots on the frost here and on there. Ugh. Uh, you know what, though? I mean, it, it, it's 64. Yeah, probably 64-ish. Yeah, it's definitely not a gem. And I don't think it's got enough to be proof-like. But I could be wrong. Let's, uh, let's see. Yep. They co-agree. Okay. That makes nothing but sense. All right, moving, moving right along. I mean, that looks like a seven over eight tail feathers too. I'm just noticing that. Uh, neat. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, eighty-two O. Again, kind of semi-proof like fields. Um. On the reverse, the obverse doesn't look so. But oh man, definitely see some wear here. So almost immediately when I see a coin that looks, the Morgan that looks this nice, this much luster, but just has this kind of scratchiness in the field and immediately see some wear, uh, a 58 all day. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a real easy, yep. It's a real easy call. Because uh, you know it's got some wear. It's not going to be in the mint state, but it's close enough and bright enough that it's it's got to be, got to be real close. All right, moving right along. I don't think we have many, many more. Um, whew. And that is unfortunate toning on the back. Like, that's, uh, that really is. Because that's, uh, that would be nice. But that, that toning is not attractive at all. I mean, the front is pretty clean in the front field. I think this is an uncirculated coin. Um, but with the big scratch here and, ugh, that horribleness on the back. That's sad. Because, I mean, this coin would have been, it could have been gem, I don't think, because of the scratch. Uh, and because the back's a little little knocked up but i mean i'm thinking to me this this is ms63 I'm, I'm tempted to say two but the front's a little too nice it's just that back Ugh, it, it really don't buy coins like this guys don't buy coins like this uh okay see yeah ms63 so i mean at least uh yeah, i'm feeling confident with the morgans let's see Okay, so we've definitely got a proof-like example out the box. I mean, you can see the frosty devices and then the kind of darkish uh, mirrored surfaces. It's also showing us tons of scratches, but that's kind of to be expected with the proof-like coins. You can be a little more lenient. Too many, though, here. And I mean, look at the die polish marks around here. This, so this, these die polish marks don't really count against it um, as far as grade. You see it under here as well. Kind of near the designs or the high points. Um, but these other marks do, of course. Um, 63 proof like is kind of what I'm thinking. I don't think it's quite enough to be deep mirror. You can see some of the, especially here on the date and stuff, it doesn't have quite enough uh, cameo. Uh, and the spotting is pretty bad. So I think 63, uh, 84 cc. So that's not a bad grade. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Oh, 64 cc. So they actually liked the coin uh, more than I did. Um, 
I mean, it's not that's not uh, unexpected. The spotting on the back stuff though really bugs me. I love toning, but toning can be bad as well. Uh, all right, we've only got a couple more. Um, so let's see another Morgan, um, eighty-three CC. Fairly original, nice coin. Does not it's no proof, not proof like or not enough. Uh, back's kind of nice. It's like a sixty-five back, but the front it hits all over. Got a lot of marks on the cheek. A lot of marks. The front's like a sixty-three. So it's funny when you when you grading coins like this, the obverse matters a lot more than the reverse. Um, so uh, even sixty-three on the front. 65 on the back, I, I gotta go uh, 63 still on the overall grade. Man, look at that. Boom, I'm feeling really good about this. This is nice. So it turns out it is, they graded the 63 as well. Um, I swear I'm not gonna get all these right. Then you can tell from them the other ones that uh, <laughs> I have certain areas I'm stronger with than others. All right, uh, I think we got two more. Uh, moving right along, and they're both Morgans. Ah, this is. See, something about that toning looks a little bit weird to me. A little too crusty. A little, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the way this particular one looks. You got an 81S. Super common date. Uh, I, I mean, there's no real marks. Uh, I'll give it that. But to me, this toning, eh. Well, I, I guess if it's legit. I don't know. The toning bugs me enough. I'm going to say MS64. Otherwise, I mean, it kind of looks like it could be. And this almost looks like environmental damage, but. Hmm. Um, you know what? I'm going to say environmental damage. That's 65. Okay. Well, I was way off on this one. Uh, I just didn't like the way this color looked. I kind of some muted colors under the other colors. I, and the fact it doesn't go all the way to the rim here. I don't know. So I, I wouldn't buy this coin, especially at gym status not that it's expensive at gym this is a fairly inexpensive coin but all right well our last one for today i uh, haven't done all right i uh, haven't done horrible with these morgans some of the other ones uh, did not fare as well Ugh. okay so we're, we're a circulated coin uh as i recall the 1899s is a slightly better date uh, but mainly in like choice unk it up um ugh. You know, um, it's bright enough that I think it has some muted luster. I mean, if it were me, I'm grading this XF45. Well, there's a little more detail. Maybe AU50. But that's as much as I could see it. I mean, look at the back. Tons of wear here. Uh, the front's got a pretty good amount, but it just looks like it's been through circulation. It's got gunk all over it. Looks very flat, kind of in this area, especially around the nose. I don't know. Uh, AU50 is my guess. Last one. Let's see how we do. 58. Huh. Well, I'm a little struck by that one. Um, maybe in hand, this is a really flashy coin with a lot of luster, and it's just got a little bit of rub. But to me, this looks like a a lower grade AU. Uh, when I think of 58, I think a coin that's basically mint state. It just has a little bit of rub on it. Um, well, anyway, um, I hope you guys have found this uh, enjoyable. Uh, let me know. It's kind of a test video for me. Again, all of these images were provided through uh, PCGS Coin Facts. So if you need, a, I mean, it's the best place online to get information about coins for an encyclopedia format. If you want a discussion, I suggest you head over to reddit.com slash rcoins. Uh, we have great discussions there all the time, and if you have a question, just feel free to ask. Uh, and as always, guys, enjoy your coins and continue to share them, and uh, I'll see you guys over at Reddit. Thanks.